Good afternoon. I have no announcements, and I stand here uh, ready to take your questions. Um, can you fill us in on the budget negotiations there and between here and the White House? Uh, there are reports now that, that despite some earlier expectations that the military will not get the major increases it had expected over the next six years in the budget. Well, I th the budget negotiations are ongoing. It's uh, an unwritten story unwritten in newspapers, unwritten in the bureaucracy. Um, uh, discussions uh, took place yesterday, uh, and they're continuing today, and uh, they'll probably go into tomorrow as well. Between so until here, they're over, I don't have any uh, firm numbers to give you. Between here and OMB or, or in, inside the building? There are uh, conversations between uh, here and OMB, between here and the White House, and inside the building. Has Secretary Cohen taken Personally, he talked, uh, although he was in the building all day yesterday, uh, meeting with the Deputy Secretary and Comptroller Lynn. Uh, he did talk with John Podesta yesterday. Um, uh, other officials in the building have been talking to OMB counterparts, and that uh, is continuing today as well. Is the building still committed to the $112 million figure laid out by the chiefs? The building is uh, committed to. Uh, um, an increase in defense spending that will allow us to do three things. One, address readiness concerns. Two, accelerate modernization. And three, uh, take care of uh, uh, forced sustainability problems uh, through dealing with pension and pay problems that have arisen. It's premature to talk about numbers at this stage. We're still trying to work out the numbers. I think we're making some progress, but we haven't finished. But there will be, you, you anticipate there will be additional funding? I anticipate that um, there will be additional funding. And as I discussed last week, um, I also think that we will uh, uh, receive certain money that's already within the budget but will be reallocated to meet, um, uh, to meet the readiness uh, for sustainability and modernization issues. Where will this money come from? Uh, some will come from uh, 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 lower, because as a result of lower fuel prices than anticipated and lower inflation than anticipated. So it'll be a combination of, uh, of reassigning certain funds within the budget to uh, increase our capabilities, and second, uh, uh, getting new money. Which will be bigger, the new money or the reassigned money? Well, um, uh, we hope they'll both be big. Yes. Secretary Cohen, uh, been in contact with any member of Congress uh, on behalf of the President regarding his possible impeachment? Uh, Secretary Cohen's job is to be Secretary of Defense, and that's what he's been doing. He um, has uh, he's been spending all his time on defense issues. Yes. Um, can you tell us anything about the nature of the terrorist threat facing U.S. military facilities in the Persian Gulf that has led you to raise uh, security alert conditions there and just how serious and credible you think these threats are? Well, um, as you probably know, most of our forces in the Gulf are now at, um, at a threat condition called uh, uh, Charlie, which is the uh, third out of four threat conditions, and the definition of threat con Charlie is an incident has occurred or intelligence has been received indicating that some form of terrorist action is imminent. And we believe that we have uh, significant credible intelligence suggesting uh, the possibility of an imminent terrorist action uh, in the uh, Middle Eastern region. And for that reason, American citizens have been warned, American diplomats have been warned, and American soldiers have been put on a higher state of uh, a higher state of threat condition. Excuse me, if I could just follow up. Um, do you believe that you have direct intelligence, or does this come from uh, other parties? Is it something that the U.S. knows directly 
And I have one more follow up after that. So what do you mean by directly? Well, intelligence, uh, is it possible that it's simply reporting you have from uh, other than sources controlled by the U.S., or is it something the U.S. knows directly from its own uh, methods and sources? Or does it come from a third country? Um, without getting into the source of the intelligence, as you know, we gather intelligence in, uh, from a variety of sources by a variety of means. And we believe that putting all that together, we have uh, very credible and disturbing information that uh, a threat um, is imminent in the region. Um, any specific targets in, in terms of diplomatic or military or private sector? Can you narrow? Can you, or do you feel it's? I choose not to be more specific okay, than that. So just my follow up on that. What do you make of the reports that Osama bin Laden is uh, seriously ill? Um, I'm aware of those reports, um, uh, and they're interesting reports. Do you agree with them since they come from the United States? Well, they don't all come from the United States. Um, uh, I think that uh, when it comes to intelligence, it's better not to uh, discuss the intelligence reports. Uh, Ken, yes. uh, just to go back to uh, Barbara's question, uh, the, the biggest uh, damage uh, that has been done to U.S. forces in the Middle East has been against buildings, uh, been uh, large uh, tonnage type uh, uh, truck or, or, or car bombs. And I would ask if the embassies and other U.S. facilities are being especially guarded uh, against vehicle uh, bomb attack. Well, first, I would quibble slightly with you. The biggest damage that's been done to the United States has been against 19 airmen at Kobar Towers who died um, by, ter by an act of terrorism. Yes, that's uh, right, yeah. But it was, by, it was by a truck bomb. With, with um, the current threat, um, I can't be more specific. I mean, it's a threat. We take it very seriously. As you know, we have uh, significant intelligence assets directed at the Middle East because it is a high threat environment. Uh, there have been uh, two attacks against uh, Americans um, in Saudi Arabia, for instance, since 1994. Um, we uh, uh, pick up uh, reports of possible threats against Americans, diplomats, and military people all the time. And uh, we assess these reports and some we take more seriously than others. This we take seriously. So what I was asking, it really and we have increased our alert posture, and we have uh, taken other measures, measures designed to protect Americans uh, uh, against such threats. I mean, will the facilities be cordoned off, uh, preventing vehicle approach uh, to a greater extent than they are today? Is what I was In terms of the military, the specific actions taken to uh, protect troops are um, uh, uh, frequently taken a at the initiative of the local commander. We obviously have very clear force protection policies. Those policies were uh, changed dramatically after the Kobar Tower attack. Um, our entire military is spending much more time, energy, and money on force protection now. It's a much uh, a greater awareness issue among troops today. Uh, than in the past, but uh, in, in terms of specific actions, that's left uh, primarily on a day-to-day -day basis to the individual commander. Broadly speaking, had the region been back at ThreatCon Bravo, and is this increase to ThreatCon Charlie based in fact a result of the uh, information over the last couple of weeks? Um, in, in where there has been an increase in the uh, threat condition, it has been in response to this information gathered over uh, the last couple of weeks. Is the information uh, linked to Osama bin Laden? Uh, we believe the information is credible information, and I don't think I'm going to talk about it in any greater specificity. Is he believed to be the source of this threat? People associated with him. It's a nice try to ask the same question in a different way, but I'm not going to talk about it with any specificity. Yes, Suzanne. Uh, can I ask you to define, though, you said Middle East region. Did you uh, indicate Persian, Persian Gulf region? <coughs> it's, uh, it is, it is uh, the, the Gulf region. And, and as you know, the State Department uh, um, warning uh, issued uh, several days ago was focused in the Gulf area. 
and, and those Nothing two, in, I just, sorry, I'm sorry. Just to make sure it does not include Africa? No. In terms of the threat that the State Department was responding to and the one you're responding to, it's the same, yes. same threat? Yes. Uh, can you, you declined to discuss uh, the reports about Osama bin Laden possibly being ill, sick. Uh, you said you found the reports interesting. Would you give any credibility to them at all without discussing <coughs> specific uh, well, would you give Charlie, to it? You said, um, no, are, I think I'll stick. I, I think I'll stick with the word uh, with the word interesting. Yes. So you won't say whether or not the United States has information that he might be ill. No, I will not. New subject. Uh, uh, just one more. Uh, are there any plans uh, to bring those uh, Patriot batteries back from Israel now that uh, the president is on his way? Uh, the Patriot batteries. Um, are continuing their uh, their exercises there, and um, uh, they're, obviously they will come back at some time, but they won't come back uh, immediately. The exercises are continuing. Um, they did some work with the Marines who were there as part of uh, Noble Shirley, and uh, they also have some exercises to do on their own, and um, those exercises aren't over yet. Yes, I, Suzanne. I just wanted to ask, under the threat con, Charlie, are there uh, 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 types of activities that uh, military people in the region are asked not to do, uh, go out to bars, or anything? can you define what <coughs> effect that has on uh, uh, people in the region at all? I think it's fair to say that uh, very few Americans, if any, in the Gulf are going out to bars, well, as it is. <laughs> there are variety of reasons. Excuse me. In certain cities in the Gulf, there are bars, and there have been warnings to Navy personnel to specific areas of entertainment, whatever that be, that they avoid them. So in particular, my question is, yeah, in particular, um, in most cases, uh, and as I say, this is commander specific and area specific, but in general, the types of measures we're discussing involve um, uh, staying on bases, uh, uh, not uh, traveling around in large groups, uh, uh, changing the predictability uh, of, uh, of activities um, it, when people do leave bases, uh, and uh, taking a variety of measures to increase uh, the security around installations. This can involve both surveillance and it can involve, it can involve a, a, a passive uh, security, guards, et cetera. So um, there are a variety of things that can be done. As you know, many of our forces in the Gulf, and I'm talking only about the military now, not about the, uh, the diplomatic corps or private citizens, because that's not my area to discuss. But uh, many of our forces in the Gulf um, uh, do work and live in relatively isolated cases. And the most dramatic example of that would be the uh, Prince Sultan Air Base in Saudi Arabia at Al-Kharj. Um, but there are other people who live in relatively isolated uh, uh, and highly secure uh, places. One example of that would be uh, Camp Doha outside of Kuwait City in Kuwait. Um, uh, so commanders will take a variety of steps to improve the uh, security and to reduce the exposure of their troops. Yes? Is any gear being brought in for force protection purposes? Well, there's a lot of gear there already. I'm not aware of any additional gear being brought in. Can yes, you comment on the continued flow of Russian technology to Iran's nuclear program? And can you provide the building's best estimate on when Iran could first conceivably produce a nuclear weapon? Well, in general, the, uh, uh, the flow of technology is disturbing. And it's, uh, we have uh, brought this up with Russian officials at the highest level, including uh, President Yeltsin and, and, uh, and as well as Prime Minister Chernyar Mirden and uh, now uh, Prime Minister uh, Primakov. Um, we have made the point to the Russians that uh, Iran is much closer to Russia than it is to the United States and that um, uh, an increase in Iran's uh, military capability, particularly its weapons of mass destruction capability, uh, could be uh, endangering Russian security as well as uh, security in the region. Um, we have uh, done more than uh, talk to the Russians about this. We have imposed some uh, uh, disciplinary measures on, on, uh, on certain uh, 
uh, uh, firms and uh, uh, dealings with certain firms. We also have a positive program uh, with the Russians to uh, help them dismantle their own nuclear weapons and also to help them uh, employ uh, scientists and others who used to work in the, uh, uh, in the weapons program. Um, we currently have a program called the International Science and Technology Center in Russia that employs um, approximately 17,000 scientists and engineers formerly engaged in the weapons business. Uh, and now they're doing working on uh, medical issues, uh, uh, nuclear waste disposal projects, uh, 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 biological means to generate energy through photosynthesis and environmental work. Um, this, this is all being undertaken to try to reduce the temptation uh, for these people to find employment um, in the wrong places. In terms of um, how long it will take, uh, it could take the, uh, the Iranians to develop a nuclear weapon, I'll have to go back and check. I remember that uh, Secretary Perry spoke about this several times and spoke about it in, in, a, in terms of a number of years. But that was always based on uh, an internally developed weapon, uh, should, to the extent that they can purchase either goods or services from abroad, that can accelerate the uh, time it would take them to develop a, uh, to develop a, uh, an atomic weapon. In general terms, is it a near-term threat, medium-term, I think term? I would just, uh, I, I have not checked um, recently on those estimates, and rather than give you a misleading answer, I'd rather, rather not. Yes, follow yes, up. I would. Can, can you say follow-up? Bill? Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, go ahead. This one? Yeah. I, just, I just wanted to follow this up. Ken, I asked about uh, the Bushehr reactor uh, last Thursday, and there's an article in the Wall Street Journal today about uh, the, there being evidence, uh, uh, pretty convincing evidence, that the Russian uh, Minotom, and that's Mr. Uh, Adamov's organization, is selling uh, uh, at least two uh, Russian nuclear research institutes are quietly negotiating to sell Iran a 40 megaton, megawatt, excuse me, heavy water research reactor and a uranium conversion facility that will uh, uh, help to be building blocks for a long-range Iranian effort to manufacture plutonium or enriched uranium for bombs. Uh, is this uh, Revelation, uh, do you think it's correct, and is it uh, of, uh, of grave concern to this Pentagon? Uh, kind of the general topic of technology transfer, particularly in the nuclear area to Iran, is very disturbing to us. Um, it's something that we have been discussing with the Russians for some time, as I said, at the highest levels. There have been a series of, uh, of talks on this from the President uh, on down, and we will continue to push this issue. Um, it's a, as the Wall Street Journal article, I thought, pointed out, it is a tricky issue because um, uh, of the economic problems that Russia is facing today, and particularly because the people who work in, in their uh, nuclear uh, ministry, their atomic ministry, used to be at the top of the heap in terms of their recognition, their pay, uh, their stature. Um, in the old Soviet Union, and in the last 10 years, they have seen much of their business uh, go away, and uh, many of them have to look elsewhere to, to get income. That's one of the reasons why we have set up a program at the International Science and Technology Center in Russia to employ some of these people. But it's also um, uh, one, of the, one of the risks we're trying to head off by trying to convince them not to sell, uh, not to sell equipment uh, or technology to Iran. You said, yes, you said Jim. earlier that um, uh, that disciplinary measures against certain firms uh, have been taken. Can you confirm uh, this Washington Times report that there are, there are two entities that that the uh, U.S. has decided to uh, economically sanction uh, to? Two of those entities. Uh, one is, I think, it's the acronym is Nikia or something like that. Um, the other is Men I, I can't. Um, I uh, I cannot uh, confirm those specifics because our negotiations with the Russian government and with particular firms right now are, are private, 
at the appropriate time, we may be able to make some announcements, but not now. But as appropriate, when we do, when we uh, believe we have conclusive information about um, a proliferating activity uh, by certain firms, we do take action against those firms. Are there any, any firms that are currently under sanction? There are. I believe there are seven, seven. currently. I, I believe there are seven currently under sanction. Yes, Jamie. Ken, uh, Iraq. Will the United States be making a decision about whether to take military action against Iraq this week based on the results of Richard Butler's report to the United Nations? Well, Richard Butler's report will certainly have an impact on, uh, on what our future uh, strategy is toward Iraq. Um, we have not uh, ruled in or ruled out any options at this stage. We are awaiting uh, uh, Ambassador Butler's report. I expect that it will be um, out this afternoon or this evening. Uh, that's my my latest information, and we will have to evaluate the report and see what it says. Well, we don't have to wait for the report to know that uh, Iraq's cooperation was less than full and unconditional. Um, isn't Iraq, uh, therefore, in violation of the promise it made back on November 14th when the United States <coughs> called off its military strike? I think um, rather than speculate right now, we should see how Ambassador Butler, who's closest to the situation, evaluates Iraqi compliance. Um, obviously, um, Iraqi compliance has been less than complete, but we need to uh, await Ambassador Butler's assessment of uh, whether he thinks he can do his job and uh, what he thinks the future will hold. And as I say, that report isn't out yet, and it won't be out for uh, probably several hours. If the president uh, were to decide that uh, Iraq's uh, lack of compliance was justifying, justified a military strike, it, does the president have the uh, moral authority to order such a strike, given that it would come at a time when he's also facing impeachment in the House of Representatives and the questions that would raise? Well, first of all, the first part of your question is hypothetical. Um, uh, he hasn't reached any decision yet because he doesn't have uh, uh, all of the information he would need to uh, 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 evaluate Iraqi compliance. Uh, the president is the commander in chief. He was duly elected. Uh, he will have to. Uh, he has just completed a, a, a trip, uh, a foreign. He is completing a foreign trip in which he uh, was able to. Uh, 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 realize or help realize a considerable achievement um, in Palestine, and um, I think that he has the full authority given under the Constitution to take any action he needs to take in uh, protection of our national interest, whatever he decides that is. Yes, Suzanne. Can you give us a rundown of the forces, force levels in the region? Um, there are, in total, uh, 24,100 um, uh, men and women in the American military there. Um, there are 22 ships. There are uh, 201 aircraft. Um, and there are 2,400 uh, uh, Army personnel in the area. The bulk of those, of course, are the Intrinsic Action Task Force that's in Kuwait. I think there are about 1,200 from the uh, Third Armored Division. Is that including the 24,000 or above? That's included. That's in, they're all included. The 24,400 is the total figure. And uh, I just broke out the number of people in the Army. 24,100, excuse me. 24,100. Yes. Does that, does that include the B-52 still in uh, Diego Garcia? It does, yes. It does include those. And how many are there? Um, well, in Diego Garcia right now, there are 15 B-52s. There are the uh, seven that will come out um, before Christmas and the eight that have gone to replace them. That includes one training plane. Um, somebody asked about the Tomahawk-capable ships. Um, there were eight ships capable of launching Tomahawk cruise missiles. Otto. Different subject. Uh, 
The Center for Strategic and International Studies put out a report today uh, warning about the threat of, of cyber terrorism. Uh, and it's something, you know, the Defense Science Board put out one in 96. There have you know, been other warnings from this building. Uh, and, you know, the, the Center's study, uh, they, they said the main reason was to, uh, you know, to try to get the nation to pay attention to this thing. That, you know, the, uh, the serious threat, nobody's, pay, nobody's concentrating enough on it. Uh, what's the feeling here? here uh, is the nation doing what it needs to to uh, counter the uh, the possibility of a you know a electronic uh, Pearl Harbor? Well, I haven't read the report, so I can't comment specifically on that report. Uh, the the threat of an electronic Pearl Harbor or the threat of cyber terrorism, uh, which could be much less hyperbolic than an electronic Pearl Harbor is clearly one that's getting increasing attention in this building and throughout the government. There's, uh, as you know, a critical infrastructure uh, 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 task force and report uh, last year, early this year, um, that has led to um, some reorganization within the government and uh, a new focus on ways to protect our critical infrastructure, whether it's uh, uh, the power system or whether it's the, um, uh, the water systems or whether it's our computer uh, systems. So uh, increasing attention is being paid to that. I think um, it's an area in which it's very difficult to say that enough attention is being paid, uh, in part because the question always arises, how much is enough? But uh, clearly, it's one that's of growing concern to the military and growing concern to this administration uh, as well. So it's getting more attention in the building and more attention outside the building. Wow. And I might add, I believe it's getting more attention from private industry as well. Yes. Can, is the, the Vincent is supposed to replace the Enterprise later this week, right? Or is it, or is it, is it I think it? The, uh, the official uh, swap out date is the 20th. Will, will the Enterprise remain or will it? She's uh, scheduled to uh, uh, be in the Mediterranean for Christmas. And there are no plans now to change that? There are no plans to change that. She'll leave on, uh, all, all, every plan suggests that she'll leave on schedule. Okay. More questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.